Morning, everyone. Get this a little closer to my there. Now everybody should be able to hear me properly. As you can tell, I am not Andrew, nor do I pretend to be. Um, unfortunately, Andrew is under the weather. Uh, he has been feeling ill all week uh, and has been in and out of the hospital, unfortunately. Um, he is, however, getting better. Uh, I was talking to him yesterday and he is starting to feel better than he has most of the week. So that is very encouraging. So please keep him in your prayers for that. Um, and as I said, I'm not Andrew, but I decided to wear some uh, plaid just to keep the tradition alive and uh, keep a little consistency going. I do not have any work boots, though, so unfortunately, that part I couldn't couldn't maintain. So a few announcements for this morning. Uh, for the month of October, we are going to be continuing our food drive. As you can see, some people have already brought in some cereal, some peanut butter and sugar is what's being requested by the food bank. So for the month, month of October, please bring that on Sunday, or you can always stop by during the week, uh, contact Andrew and he'll make arrangements to, to get that from you. Not this Monday because it will be Thanksgiving. However, Monday nights at 6.30, the women's group meets here. Uh, we also have our men's group that meets at my place Tuesday mornings at nine. This week, we will have Glow at 6.30 at, on Wednesday. Uh, next Sunday, yeah, it is next Sunday, the 16th at 7 p.m. is Andrew's ordination induction service here at the church. So all are welcome to attend that wonderful uh, festivity and uh, join in that uh, joyous celebration for him. We have a craft room cleanup going on on the 22nd. So if you have any craft supplies or hobby supplies or tools related to those sort of activities, that you wish to donate and clear out of your own house so that somebody else can clutter up theirs, by all means, please let us know so that we can get those from you. And we're going to be holding that, as I said, October 22nd from uh, nine till noon. The women's uh, auxiliary is also holding a bake sale with that as well. And that'll be from uh, nine till noon for their bake sale. And then coming up on the 5th of November, we're going to be trying something new here. Uh, we're going to be having an RC car fun day. So anybody who has little RC cars, bring them. We're going to be setting up some tracks in the uh, gym. And when I say tracks, don't get in your mind, you know, big monster jam events or anything like that. We're just going to be putting some tape on the floor, so don't get too excited. But we're trying to have uh, the idea of two tracks for the kids and those that are kid at heart. Uh, we're hoping to have like a race track and then some sort of an obstacle course for those with more robust four-wheel drive models. So we're hoping to have some fun with that. So if you have an RC car, bring it and have some fun. Invite your friends from the community as well. It's not something that's just for the church. So with that, those are all the announcements I have for this morning. So here is your call to worship. And it is, praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not, not all his benefits who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord all his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, my soul. That's from Psalm 103, verse 1 through to 5, 20 to 22. And with that, I'll ask Gary to open us in prayer. Let us pray. Dear Father, thank you for being in our presence today. Thank you for being with us every day, everywhere we go, no matter what we're going through. 
May we rejoice and thank you today for all the blessings that you've bestowed upon us for every time you've been there for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so now Erica and Rhonda will sing our songs. The first, first one is Come Ye Thankful People Come. If you'd like to stand with us.
Thank you, worship team. All right. So at this point in time, I'm going to ask Beth to come up and give us a prayer for our children. Good morning. He called a little child and had him stand among them, and he said, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for the children. May they feel your presence daily. Please protect them, guide them to be good examples for you daily. May they always feel loved and supported. Bless their time in Sunday school with Sherry Lynn, and may it be a time of love, learning, and refreshment for all. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So with that, the children may go downstairs and enjoy their morning. And now I will ask Rosemary to come up and read scripture. Good morning. Uh, the first piece of scripture this morning is Luke 17, verses 11 to 19. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all 10 cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go, your faith has made you well. Thank you, Rosemary. All right, so at this time I get the uh, privilege of giving our pastoral prayer. So let us bow our heads and join our hearts. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity and the ability to meet together, to gather and to worship you. Father God, so many don't have that privilege in this world. Let us not take it for granted. Father God, I ask that you look over this congregation, both here and at home, those who are unable to make it out this morning. May you bless and protect them. May you keep them all their days. Father God, I lift up Burlington Baptist. I pray that you work through their situation in terms of finding a minister to help them with their services. Father God, I pray for all those that will be traveling this weekend as it is Thanksgiving weekend. I pray for everyone to have safe travels, to enjoy their family, and to appreciate what we have that so many others do not. Especially at this time where we look at parts of Europe that are currently under war. And we think that we have it so rough when there's an extra person in front of us at the Tim Hortons parking lot. Father God, I thank you for all that you do for us, the many blessings that we see daily and those that we do not. I thank you for your grace and your mercy that we do not deserve, but that you give us freely. I ask that you place your healing hand upon Andrew 
give guidance and discernment to the physicians and doctors and medical staff that are seen to him. May he feel your peace and love. And I also ask that you come alongside Ariel and John, as this is a difficult time for them as well to see Andrew suffer in this manner. Strengthen them as they encourage him and help him. I also ask that you strengthen and encourage us to help him and his family and all those in our congregation that may be sick or lacking in some way that we can help them. Let us think about those in our community that need our help and the ways that we can help them instead of looking to other areas in other provinces or countries that we could help. Let us think about those that are around us. And on this weekend, just remind us all what we have to be thankful for. Like your son dying on the cross for our sins and our punishment. That I am thankful for. Pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So at this time, I'll ask Evan to come up and do a uh, reading. Well, good morning, everyone. It's good to see each of you. I have the opportunity this morning to lead us in a responsive psalm, and uh, we're going to read together Psalm 136. Um, this psalm is a very fitting psalm to read together on this Thanksgiving weekend, for this psalm resounds with thanksgiving. The psalm tells of God's great acts throughout Israelite history, from creation all the way through to the promised land and beyond. As I was uh, just thinking about this psalm and looking it up in my study Bible before leading this morning, um, my study Bible noted that this psalm was really written and meant to be um, said together or sung together. Most likely what would have happened um, in ancient Israel is that a priest would have led one of the first lines and then either a choir or the whole congregation of Israelites would have responded with the refrain, his love endures forever. And so that's more or less what we'll do together this morning as we say and read this responsive psalm together. We have much to be thankful for. I think we can all agree with that. As Jason's prayer um, said, we have much to be thankful for. Uh, we have roofs over our heads, uh, food on our table, friends, family, and the list could go on and on. We have much to be thankful for. And so on this day, during this Thanksgiving weekend, how fitting it is then to say this psalm together, together which expresses our thanksgiving to God, who, of course, we believe is, as Christians believe, is the author of all that we have to be thankful for. And so I'm going to ask you to stand, actually, if you would please stand with me. And as you can see, Andrew has it laid out quite nicely for us on the screen where I will say the first line, um, and then you will follow with congregation, his faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Give thanks to the God of gods. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. He alone does great wonders. He made the heavens skillfully. He spread the land on the waters. He made the great lights. The sun to rule by day. the moon and stars to rule by night. He remembered us in our humiliation. He rescued us from our foes. He gives food to every creature. 
Give thanks to the God of heaven. His faithful love endures forever. Thank you, and you may be seated. Of course, I can't get away without sharing a few little thoughts about this psalm. Um, like I said, we have much for which to be thankful for. And each of us, I'm sure, could stand up and share things that we are thankful for. Some of which I've mentioned, some of which Jason's prayer alluded to. But I was so happy to hear his prayer also say the thing that I believe and want to point out to you that we have to be most thankful for. And that, of course, is salvation through faith in Christ. This psalm speaks about the love of God. And isn't it an amazing thought to think that our God is a loving God? That the one God of the universe loves you and loves me. It's a powerful thought that this God who created all things, who redeemed the Israelites from slavery in Egypt, who brought them safely into the promised land, that this God is a God of love, that he loves us, he loves you, and he loves me. I especially want to draw your attention to two lines from this psalm. And the first is verse 23, which in the NIV puts it this way. And what we read, it mentions humiliation, but the um, NIV in verse 23 says that he remembered us in our low estate. He remembered us in our low estate. And then the next verse is verse 24, where he says he freed us from our enemies. When it comes to Israel's history, this is literally true for them. He remembered them in his low estate, and he freed them from their enemies. Of course, we, thinking and seeing this through the lens of Christ, know that this is true for each of us who have repented of sin and trusted in Christ, that he remembered us in his low estate. In fact, as we're going to read in just a second, he entered in with us in the midst of our low estate, and through his perfect life, death, and resurrection, he freed us from all our enemies, from sin, from death, and from the devil. Tim Keller, I've mentioned this before, um, has a great devotion on the Psalms, and he says this about verse 23. God's love was so great that he came into our low estate in Jesus Christ. One of the most well-known verses of the Bible is John 3.16, which says, because God so loved the world, and notice the emphasis there on love, for God so loved the world that he sent his only son, that whoever believes in him has life in his name. This is what I believe we are to be most thankful for this weekend. And so on this Thanksgiving weekend, I would say to you, I'd say to me, I would say to all of us, to be sure to take a moment and lift up your praise and your thanksgiving to God for all of your blessings, for every one of them, for we do indeed have much to be thankful for. But most importantly, and above and beyond all else, be sure to raise up your thanksgiving to God for salvation that is found in Christ. Let me say a word of prayer. Let's pray together. Father God, we do thank you for this day, and we thank you for this weekend and all that it represents. We thank you, God, for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Of course, as we say this, we do know that there are those, when I, even within our society, who do struggle. And so, God, we do lift them up to you. And we pray as, uh, as we have been blessed, as many of us have been blessed, that we would uh, take from our abundance and give and share with others for their benefit. And at the same time, God, we do thank you for our many blessings, for our abundance. But above and beyond all else, God, we want to thank you for what you have done for each of us through your son, Jesus Christ. Out of great love, you sent him, and he willingly came and laid down his life, living a perfect life and dying a perfect death, so that all who repent of sin and trust in him can have life in his name. This is what we are most thankful for, and we praise you for it. We pray all this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever praised. Amen. Thank you, Evan, for that. Greatly appreciate that. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention during the announcements was that, unfortunately, there will be no coffee time after service this morning. Okay. <laughs>
So we have a reflection piece for you guys to sit back and enjoy. Uh, and this one is called Blessed Be Your Name. worship team for that song and at this point I will call Suzanne to come up and read our Ezra scripture today Before I read the scripture, I would just like to thank whoever quietly came in and decorated the church so nicely for this morning. They definitely have a gift of decorating. Thank you. I'm not sure if they're here or if they're out on Zoom, but I'd like to thank them. It looks lovely. This morning, our scripture is from Ezra chapter 6, 13 to 22. Then because of the decree King Darius had sent, Tatina, governor of Trans-Euphrates, and Jitar Mozina and their associates carried it out with diligence. So the elders of the Jews continued to build and prosper under the preaching of Haggai, the prophet of Zechariah, a descendant of Edu. They finished building the temple according to the command of the God of Israel, 
and the decrees of Cyrus, Darius, and Artaxerxes, kings of Syria, sorry, kings of Persia. The temple was completed on the third day of the month of Adar in the sixth year of the reign of King Darius. Then the people of Israel, the priests, the Levites, and the rest of the exiles celebrated the dedication of the house of God with joy. For the dedication of this house of God, they offered a hundred bulls, 200 rams, 400 male lambs, and a sin offering for all Israel, 12 male goats, one for each of the tribes of Israel. And they installed the priests in their divisions and the Levites in their groups for the service of God at Jerusalem, according to what is written in the book of Moses. On the 14th day of the first month, the exiles celebrated the Passover. The priests and the Levites had purified themselves and were ceremonially clean. The Levites slaughtered the Passover lamb for all the exiles, for their relatives, the priests, and for themselves. So the Israelites, who had returned from exile, ate it together with all who had separated themselves from the unclean practices of their Gentile neighbors in order to seek the Lord, the God of Israel. For seven days they celebrated with joy the festival of unleavened bread, because the Lord had filled them with joy of changing by changing the attitude of the king of Assyria, so that he assisted them in the work on the house of God, the God of Israel. May God bless this reading of his word. Thank you, Suzanne, for that. Just bring it up a bit. What Andrew had sent me here. Of course, it doesn't want to show me. Bear with me for a moment, story. There we go. So this is from Andrew. I by am no means smart enough to come up with all of this, so give him the credit. In the passage just read, the exiles whom we have been following over the past few months have finally found the fulfillment of God's promises made through the prophet Jeremiah. Ezra 1.1 reads, In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fill, fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord moved the heart of Cyrus, king of Persia, to make a proclamation throughout his realm and to put it into writing. The word of God spoken by Jeremiah was this, from Jeremiah 29, 10 to 14. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. We read in our text today that once the building of the temple was complete. Once the promise of God was made true and realized, the returned exiles celebrated by making great offerings to the Lord. As we find ourselves here this morning on Thanksgiving Sunday, how fitting is it that we read of such a strong reaction to God's provision? The returned Israelites thank their God, our God, by worshiping and serving him. In the following month after the temple is built, the Passover meal is shared and the festival of unleavened bread is enjoyed, a time of remembrance of when God has brought, out, brought his people out of slavery from within a foreign land and led them to their home by fire and cloud. We too have been brought out of slavery. In fact, we have been brought out of slavery by the blood of Jesus Christ. In the same way that the returned exiles were thankful to God for his provisions and faithfulness, we have reason to be thankful as well. As we are thankful, let us turn to God and glorify him. 
For Andrew and Ariel, they have seen and are thankful for the ways in which God has provided them through the hands and feet of those gathered here today and those who have gone before us. They are thankful for Doug and Evelyn Saunders. Not only has their house been a home for Ariel, John, and Andrew, but the money they left and entrusted to this church supplied Andrew's wages and still affects them now. Every time they do a load of laundry, they are reminded that members of this church and community came together to purchase a washer and dryer for them. They are thankful for the yard that they have and that it has been kept and maintained by members of this church. Andrew and Ariel are thankful for the mat mittens, the hats, the blankets, the fruits and vegetables, the meals, the cards, the phone calls, messages, and even some tools and a bicycle, which have all been supplied by you here today. They thank God for their friendships, the company, and the family, which they have found here in Berwick. They are thankful for God's provisions. Ezra 1.1 says, the Lord moved the heart of Cyrus, king of Persia. And Ezra 6.22 says, the Lord had filled them with joy by changing the attitude of king of Assyria. Like all things in life, the story of the temple being built started with God's sovereignty and ended with God's sovereignty. The good things, of the, the, good things the Israelites had were from God. The good things that Andrew and Ariel have received are from God. And all that this church has is from God. Our God is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. So let's be all thankful for that. I was also asked to provide a little message as well this morning. So bear with me as I read from my sloppy handwriting here. As most of you know, my name is Jason Pickles and I am a child of God. However, that always wasn't the case. I wasn't always a believer, but from an early age, I always had a sense that I was going to be dead by 40. It's not a forbidding sense. It wasn't a doom and gloom feeling. It was just a matter of fact. The east is where the sun rises. The west is where the sun sets and I was going to be dead by 40. I accepted it, didn't bother me. So as I grew up, this was something that was always sort of in the back of my mind, but never really played into my life decisions. I grew up in a happy home, had a loving family, did well in school, never really got in trouble per se. And then finally I made it out on my own. And then I was young, dumb, and full of pride. Now I'm just older. Um, it's amazing what sort of situations you can get yourself into when you let your pride and arrogance lead you. And unfortunately, I made pretty much every stupid decision you could ever make. I was bad with finances. I was bad with uh, relationships, both personal and through work. Um, I did things that harmed myself and my family. And again, pride said that I was right and nobody else could tell me otherwise. Um, growing through my late teens and early 20s, I was the type of person that did well at work. You know, I knew that I had to buckle down to make a dollar because that dollar would support the alcohol that I wanted. It would support the drugs that I wanted and consumed. Um, unfortunately, I abused both for a number of years. And to this day, I still thank God, even though I was not a believer at that time, I thank God for him having a hand over me because I would not be here today if it weren't for him. The amount of times that I really can't even remember anymore, unfortunately, 
um, that I would drink and drive like a dummy, that I would arrive home with a set of keys in my hand going, how did I get here? You know, having absolutely no recollection of the time from leaving a bar to the time I got to my home and I drove. Now, thankfully, because of God's intervention, I never harmed anyone when I was doing these stupid, stupid acts of driving drunk. I never caused any accidents, never harmed anybody, thankfully. But that doesn't condone the behavior. It was absolutely asinine. However, that being said, he did see me through these events. And eventually I came to the valley uh, from Moncton, New Brunswick. I knew that at that point in my life, I needed to start making some changes, although I didn't know what or how to make those changes. I just knew that if I were to continue on the path that I was going on, 40 was going to come sooner than later, and I may not even make it to 40, probably going to be dead by 30. So I left Moncton, came to the valley uh, for a change of scenery and change of pace, and uh, eventually, I met what became to be the love of my life, Lisa, who unfortunately is not here today. She is at work. Um, and th through her, my life has changed for the better. She has enabled me to fulfill what I should have been through Christ. And I thank her tremendously for that. Um, once our son was born 10 years ago, we both realized that even though we weren't churchgoers, that we should probably become involved in a church because it would be important for William to grow up in a church. We recognized it. But it was something that was always in the back of our minds, but we never really saw it to fruition until um, about five years ago. Uh, five years ago, William was at school towards the end of his school year. And they were having a field day at the Grandview Manor where they went and did activities with the seniors so that the seniors could get out and watch and participate. Um, so my better half went to volunteer and Evan as well was one of the volunteers from the church who went to help them as well. Um, Evan and Lisa ended up standing next to each other for most of the morning. And of course, Evan, as he is wont to do, talked to her and invited her to the church. Uh, I believe a few days after that uh, meeting, we were going to be having a corn boil here at the church. So timing was perfect. So we came, um, we came to the corn boil, not really knowing what we were coming for or not having sort of a goal in mind, but we came and we came, we ate, we saw, we came back on Sunday. Um, and as soon as we sat down in the pews that first Sunday morning, I knew. I knew that this is where I had to be. It's not where I needed to be or wanted to be. It's where I had to be. This is where God had been calling me for 40 years. And finally, I found where I was supposed to be and what I needed in my life. And it wasn't drugs. It wasn't alcohol. So that year was 2018. Uh, that was, I believe, around June or July that we first started coming here. And by December of that year, I was baptized and I became a follower of Christ. So in December of 2018, it was approximately a month before my birthday. And as I stated, I was going to be dead by 40. December 9th, 2018, I was baptized, just shy of my 41st birthday. So at the age of 40, my old self died, and I was born again to Christ. So something I didn't even know for 40 years was in the works. So everything that we do may not necessarily play out to the way that we think it will, but it plays out to what God will do for us. 
and how his will and his timing will play out in our lives. And that we have to trust and that we have to have faith that what he says is true. And I know that since coming to Christ and being born again, I am a new person. I used to be somebody who had rage issues, who would fly off the handle for the mere inconvenience of being inconvenienced. I was somebody who would let their pride and their arrogance dictate that I was the only person who was right. And that was just the way it was, whether you liked it or not. And if you didn't, then my rage kicked in. Now, unfortunately, that has caused a lot of suffering to a lot of people that I care deeply for. But thankfully, through the work of the Holy Spirit in my life, my rage has no longer been as much of an issue. I can't say that it is no longer an issue because it's always going to be there. It's something that I have to work on. But thankfully, the Holy Spirit has strengthened me tremendously to be able to do so. Since becoming a follower of Christ, I have become a better person. I have become a better husband and I have become a better father to my son. And that is what I am thankful for this weekend, is what Christ has done in my life and in the lives of my family. Thank you. All right. So let's see what else we got here. Andrew Skid. What do we got here for schedule? So we've got our closing song. Great is thy faithfulness. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's quite fitting after his testimony there this morning. God bless you, Jason. Thank you. Let us stand as we have our final piece. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changes not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever. 
Thank you again, worship team, for that amazing song of truth. Your closing prayer. O oh God, who in Jesus Christ called us out of darkness into marvelous light, enable us to declare your wonderful deeds. Thank you for your steadfast love and praise you with heart, soul, mind, and strength now and forever. Amen. And here is your benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make you, sorry, the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Blessings to all and everybody have a great week and we'll see you back here next Sunday. Thank you.